Hi everyone, Angela here. To make a template for this bold cozy, take two pieces of paper and tape them together. Fold in half, then turn and fold in half again. Measure five and a quarter inches on each side and cut out. You should now have a ten and a half inch square. Fold to the left and up again so that the folds are on the right. From the top corner, measure and mark one and one eighth of an inch, then measure down and mark two and a half inches. Join those marks and cut out. Flip the paper over so the bottom fold is now on the side. Again, mark over one and an eighth, down two and a half, cut and then open up. On the top right side, mark three quarters of an inch from each corner. Now you can use the pattern as is, but if you're planning on making a few of these bold cozies, it's better to have a sturdier template. Here I'm just using a cheap plastic cutting board. Cut it out in the plastic and then cut out the two notches at the side. With the holiday season coming up, these bold cozies make wonderful gifts and people always say that it's something that they never knew they needed. For each side, I'm using 100% quilting cotton. I trim away the selvage on the side, square up the bottom, and then cut out two 11-inch squares. For the batting, use 100% cotton wrap and zap that's microwave safe and also machine washable. I'll leave a link for this down in the description. Cut out two 10 and a half inch squares. I'm using a vanishing ink pen to mark the batting. You can use any type of marking tool. Place the template on top of one piece, mark out all the darts and the two notches on the side. Next, flip the template over and place on the other piece. Mark out all the darts again and the notches that are now on the side at the bottom. Have your fabric wrong side up and center the batting on top. You should see quarter of an inch of fabric all around. If you need to, pin in the center and between the two marks on the side. Use 100% cotton thread to make sure these are microwave safe. I'm using the Juki TL2010Q sewing machine. The link for this and the tools I use are down in the description below. If you're in Australia or New Zealand, click the link for Echidna Sewing and Juki Junkies for North America. I'm increasing the stitch length to number 3. For both pieces, stitch close to the edge of the batting just before and after each mark on the side. This will make closing the opening later a little bit easier. I don't bother quilting the batting to the fabric first because as you can see it kind of sticks to the fabric and stays in place already. To sew the darts, Fold in half so that the right sides of the fabric are together, matching the edges. Then place your finger inside and push down, making sure that the fabric isn't pleating inside. Then flatten the fold. To sew the dart, we'll be stitching along this line. Now instead of starting your stitching from the top of the fabric, start your stitching just below the edge of the batting. Start with a back tack, stitch along the line, don't back tack at the end of the dart, just continue stitching off the batting to finish. Just leave about a half inch tail of thread at the end. You can see that the bottom of the dart won't come apart and leaving that top edge open will eliminate having to clip the seams later on. Repeat these steps for all of the darts, then remove the pin from the center. If you're finding this video helpful, make sure to like, share, subscribe, turn on all notifications, and leave a comment below. I'm using my favorite Kai embroidery scissors to trim the darts. 
From the top, trim away the darts, leaving about a quarter of an inch seam. Use the point of the scissors to separate the batting from the fabric and clip down the center of the batting to the point. Then carefully trim away the batting close to the stitching on both sides. This next step is optional, but I like to open up the darts and press them all flat. It just gives it a nice crisp finish. Flip the one with the side marks on the bottom so that it's right side up. Place the other one inside with right sides together and the marks matching at the side. Match the edges and the seams, clip all around, making sure to catch the batting on both sides. We'll start with a back tack here, stitch all around, back tack here, leaving an opening between the marks. Stitch with a half inch seam allowance. The right side of the foot should be in line with the edge of the batting. Back tack, stitch until you're half an inch from the edge. With the needle down, lift the foot and pivot. Let me know down in the comments where you're watching from. Trim all the corners on an angle, making sure not to cut any of the stitching. Since the batting's already smaller, we don't need to trim it and we don't need to clip into the seam here. Carefully turn it right side out. I find it easiest to gather up the fabric like putting on socks, folding the seams over and pushing out the corners first. Once done, use a knitting needle or a point turner to push out the corners. Fold in the seams of the opening, line up the edges and clip together. Having that half inch seam and the layer sewn together makes this easier to do. Adjust the seam so that it's right in the center and we'll start the top stitching from this start. To sew a 1 8 of an inch top stitch, have the edge of the fabric in line with the middle of the right side of the foot. Start with the back tack, stitch all around pivoting at the corners and back tack to finish. Keep adjusting the seam at the side, making sure it's in the center. This way the edges and the top stitching will look nice on both sides of this reversible bull cozy. Starting and stopping just inside this top stitching, we'll sew two diagonal lines through all the layers. Fold the bull cozy in half and use a corner on the other end as a guide to sew straight across to the other side. Slide the corner down and stretch your fabric a bit as you're doing this. Stretching the fabric will prevent the fabric from pleating on the underside. So now you have a nice, neat, bold cozy. You can hardly tell where the opening is. There's no extra bulk along the edges or at the darts. And what I love most is that both layers are quilted together. This small bowl is six inches wide and two inches deep and fits perfectly inside this cozy. This larger bowl is eight inches wide and four inches deep and will also fit inside. Thanks again for watching. Let me know if you'll give this method a try and make sure to check out some of my other videos up next.